NXT took place last night from its home at Full Sail University. And you sort of the show off with the Yannis era coming out. They get a good reaction. Adam Cole is champion. And of course, the other three don't look as happy, in particular, Roderick Strong. It seems like there's cracks in the Undisputed Era. Uh, Fish and O'Reilly lost their belts. Um, Strong was embarrassed by the Velveteen Dream. And then Strong went on on a promo. He talked about Dream. And uh, once the lights come out, however, the lights went out, and Dream does a voiceover promo, and his logo appeared on the Titan Tron. And uh, Strong says, Dream would regret ever coming back to NXT. And they left. So. Quick promo. Next, you had uh, Jordan Devlin the frame, uh, defend the NXT uh, Cruiserweight title against Leo Rush. Devlin wins. Not much here. I don't really care for either guy. Um, Rush uh, lost the match and Devlin retained. It was a good match. Just don't really care. Next, you go backstage and I think uh, one of the ladies who the ladies is not uh, well, Kathy's gone now, but one of uh, the chicks, uh, Dakota Kai and uh, Raquel Gonzalez interviewed backstage. Uh, Gonzalez said uh, she explained that she knew how Kai felt when Gonzalez herself was at the Foreign Center constantly being looked over, which was why she decided to help Dakota Kai out this past weekend during Kai's street fight with uh, Tegan Knox. Kai said that Gonzalez proved she had her back on Sunday and na- that now uh, Kai would have her since the other day be unstoppable. NXT Commissioner William Regal appeared in the shot next and explained how Kai would be facing Tegan Knox in rematch, only this time it will be inside a steel cage. So that's part three. Tegan Knox wins part two, Dakota Kai wins part, uh, oh, sorry, Tegan Knox won part one, Dakota Kai wins part two, and uh, the trilogy, the blow off, the rubber match is inside a steel cage, pretty good. They show Tommaso Ciampa outside the venue before the next commercial break. Did we get a post match interview with uh, Rhea Ripley? It's, I guess this is actually the last appearance of Kathy Kelly. Gonna miss seeing Kathy. Damn, she's so fucking hot. I just have to say, geez, Kathy is fucking gorgeous. But uh, last time we really get to see her, and uh, she's interviewing Rhea Ripley, and Rhea Ripley's storming off. She's mad. She's mad at Charlotte. And she said uh, the joke's on Charlotte because Ripley is who she wanted to face at WrestleMania. And, of course, they showed a graphic, Rhea Ripley, Charlotte Flair for WrestleMania. They never really announced the matches this early. We already know three matches, basically. That are, I mean, Becky Chia has not confirmed yet, but we know what's happening. And uh, we know uh, Ed, Randy Orton Edge, that's four matches, and Brock Drew's already announced, and I mean, we know it's Roman and Fiend, those are five matches. Uh, what else? I'm sure they'll, they'll announce uh, more later, but we already know five matches. I think the card's already shaping up. Backstage, uh, we, uh, so next, Austin Theory comes out, and uh, he was, one, wants to wrestle Ciampa, Ciampa just grabs the mic, and he's mad, he's talking about Portland, he's talking about TakeOver Portland, and... Um, Champa basically said not tonight. Champa tried to explain how he knew Gargano did what he did uh, at Takeover. He went on uh, to say uh, more, but then he had a theory. He turned uh, to Champa, but Champa just lays him out with the right hand, and uh, Champa said that Gargano needed to be gone from NXT. So I think Gargano probably should be gone from NXT. What else is he going to do? I think he's probably just should go to the main roster. I don't think Champa is going to leave NXT. I think there's just too much wrongs with this now, but I think Gargano probably, I mean, probably should go to the main roster now. What else is there to do in NXT before he gets stale? Ciampa was going to the back, but then Theory went after him again, then Ciampa just beat the living shit out of him. He had, um, he just whipped him into to the barricade five or six times before going back, just beat the living shit out of this kid. We see a Chelsea Green photo shoot with her manager, Robert Stone, before the next break. Their brand new relaunches tonight. This is a joke. Finn Balor said NXT is his chessboard after the finger gone on this Sunday. He has to keep an eye for his next move. I think Balor probably goes to the title next. Probably Colin Balor is the main event. I would assume, I'm not for sure, it's not confirmed obviously, but I would, cons- I would assume that's probably going to be the main event for NXT TakeOver uh, Tampa Bay, I assume. Grizzled Young Vets uh, against Mendoza and Joaquin Wild. Eh, not much there. Grizzled Young Vets with the win. Uh, it was a solid match. I don't really care much. Gibson gone to Drake. He says they weren't the land of free, but the land of the neckbeards and yanks. Who's making fun of Americans, calling them fat and greasy and neckbeard shit like that. They show the Rosa rates. Pete Dunn and Matt Riddle celebrate with the fans uh, in the crowd as they make their way to the ring. Dunn and Riddle say uh, they got their golf cart impounded at NXT TakeOver. Riddle said that they both partied hard in TakeOver, but the Dusty Cup, he didn't party too hard. Um, 
did the, 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 sorry the Dusty Cop didn't party uh, too hard with them and passed out and passed the company's wellness policy. The cup will be out for thirty days. It's a thing here. It's a thing here. Uh, he basically explained. So basically, yeah, the the cup was so drunk it failed WWE's wellness policy. So no cup. That's pretty funny actually. That's the way of writing it off too. So not the way to fucking giant cup, dusty cup river. And I guess also they can um. By doing that, they can also, uh, well, I guess it's actually a good part of their gimmick, that cop. But I guess doing it also, they, that's the way they create it off TV. And they actually had the Bros. Way to defend their titles against Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan. Uh, Burch and Lorcan had a very good match with the Undisputed Era. I remember that match they had a few months, or almost a year ago at TakeOver. One of the TakeOvers was a very good match they were doing. Uh, here we know who was going to win. Uh, Bros. Raids got to win a very solid match up here. The Bros. Raids are uh, definitely the better team. They get, they celebrate the fans. They're the most overact in NXT without question right now. I don't think there's any doubt. They're by far the best part of NXT. And dare I say, they might be the most entertaining part in the entire WWE roster right now. Rosa rates are awesome. Roderick Strong with the rest of the era backstage. And uh, he uh, says he doesn't need our help and he wants uh, to beat Dream by himself. For Gon Sons, cut a, a selfie promo next. They say they're offered and uh, by the girls, uh, they were offended by what the girls of young veterans said about Neckbeard and Yanks. And I guess they'll probably face each other next. Uh, they show Keith Lee on WWE backstage. That's going to be the thing he's going to do. Uh, Keith Lee against Kona Reeves. Quick squash match. Keith Lee wins in the second. Dominic Dijakovic got in the ring and told him he wants another shot. He said that it had, uh, he had Lee at, beat at TakeOver at Portland until his lower back gave out. Lee responded without saying um, without saying that after Dijakovic got approved by Wimbrigo, he will fight forever with him. So I'm going to do it. Chelsea Green comes out with Roger Stout. Robert Stone, Roger Stone. I think of Roger Stone. He just looks like him. I don't know. Roger Stone. Uh, you can look him up. Uh, <laughs> Ro- he, has a, he has the exact same glasses. I keep thinking it's Rod- Robert Stone, not Roger Stone. She's against Caden Carter. Uh, I actually, uh, I shouldn't say so. I actually have interacted with Roger Stone, the real Roger Stone, who's actually you know, in jail right now. I've actually interacted with him a few times. I know him. Anyway, Caden uh, Carter against Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green, uh, this was a much better match than what they did a few weeks ago. Chelsea Green gets revenge against Kaden Carter. They give her the win. I don't know what they're going to do with her. She's going to get a big push in NXT, but I don't see much in her. I just think, oh, she's all right. I don't really know if she's going to be a star. But she got the win. Uh, better from the match from a few weeks ago, but I don't really think... Uh, I mean, the whole thing was the Bianca Belair run-ins. Bianca Belair runs in the middle of the match. She just makes them both look like jobbers. And what she says is... Uh, she cut the promo on Charlotte without actually mentioning Charlotte's name, without mentioning Raw. She wants a match with Charlotte. And I thought exactly what they did with Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair uh, at TakeOver was basically... Um, uh, obviously not instead at WrestleMania, but when they try to attack Bianca Belair, they think, all right, we'll, we'll pop a rating for NXT on the way there. So I think that was the reason. You'll, you will see Charlotte and Bianca Belair in NXT, I assume, in a few weeks. And, of course, leading up to Charlotte Flair and Ripley at a TakeOver. But that'll be a good main event for NXT. They have Charlotte and Bianca. This was... a. Uh, anyway, uh, the whole uh, Chelsea Green, uh, Kia Carter thing, this was actually better uh, than... Uh, what they did a few weeks ago when uh, Chelsea Green gets the win. Actually, she should have a few weeks ago. She should have won that. They announced next week on uh, NXT TV of Austin Theory against Tommaso Ciampa. And you also have Finn Balor making an appearance. And you also have Dakota Kai and Tegan Knox having a steel cage. But that's not for another two weeks. So we get that. That would be a good main event. So you have two good women main events. Roderick Strong against the Velveteen Dream. Main event time. This was a solid matchup here. I enjoyed it. Uh, this was good. It went on for a while. This was a good main event. This was, they built this up well. I thought this, they, they couldn't really add it to TakeOver. Their TakeOver is too stacked. But this was a good match to have. Uh, what you had was, um, you had, uh, you had, there wasn't, uh, you had Velveteen Dream rip off his bodysuit to reveal uh, the tight. They had Marina Shafir on the back of him. So it's just a Robert Roode rip off. Unspear comes out to the ring and Dream drove them, uh, dove into them back in the ring. Dream did a springboard, but Strong caught him with the knee for the two, uh, for a two count in the final. And Dream was able to steal a pin away from Strong to win the match, but there wasn't a celebration as the Unspear immediately jumped, uh, jumped Dream. They beat him down and they posed over him as the show went off the air. So, I thought this was a good show. Um, it was a burnt out crowd. I thought, I think uh, something. Um, 
to say is when you burn the crowd out, it's, it feels like this was just a recap show. NXT before the before they started doing live shows, they would always like do recap shows after takeovers. They would just phone it in. Now they actually had to do a real show. And I thought it was okay. Um, I thought an AEW was a much better show. I thought Dynamite was far better than NXT this week. I have to say, I still like NXT, but I thought Dynamite was a much better show.